Hi everybody, Bill here from Today in Iowa. On the left side of your screen, you see the Frontier 1066 disc carol. And on the right side of your screen, you see the Land Pride 1048 disc carol. If you'd like to see these two harrows go head to head on an informal comparison, join me right now on Today in Iowa. Well, hi everybody. Thanks for joining me for another video. I appreciate it. Here's the equipment we're going to use today. A couple of disc arrows from different companies. I think you're going to enjoy the informal comparison. For some time now, I've wanted to compare a four foot and a six foot uh, or five foot, excuse me, uh, with disc plow and see which one works better under the 2038. You know, this all started with a Sunday walk at my dealer's lot. I like walking through there and seeing what used equipment he has. And I asked him if I could try out the two, and I promised to only bring one back, and he knows I'm pretty true to that. If he brings it down or gets it down to my property, I typically keep one of them, especially when I'm comparing the two. Well, once I got the uh, plow home, uh, I wanted to unload it with my forks, and it's worth repeating. You know, I've said it several times in my videos. I really su strongly suggest you consider your first attachment to be a set of forks. You'll wonder how you ever got along without a set once you have a set. I use these all the time for unloading and lifting and saving my back. Uh, fairly inexpensive first uh, purchase, but well worth it. And hey, before I forget, I wanted to show you what I'm using for ballast today. That's the 72 inch box plate there from King Cutter, and that's going to be my next video. Let's just run down a few specs here on the Frontier uh, disc. This has sealed bearings. Uh, it is made for a category one to three operation and is iMatch compatible. Uh, it requires at least 28 horsepower, according to the manual. It weighs 445 pounds and is 66 inches wide. It has 16 discs, and in this case, they're all notched. They're 16-inch diameter, and they're spaced at 7.5 inches. Well, here's the uh, iMatch Quick Attach system. You know, I made a mistake a couple of videos, and I said, boy, this is one of the nicest things I've ever purchased. Boy, I forgot this was a birthday present. Holy cow. So that was one of the nicest birthday presents I've ever got. So I've clarified that for the record. All right, talked enough. Let's get this thing out and get uh, plowing something up. So I leveled the uh, uh, disc up and locked the quick attach levers down. And I left this in because I wanted to comment on a couple things and I'll compare this with the Frontier. The Land Pride is pretty easy to move. You'll look at the structure there of how the tubes come in to one centerpiece and then you can adjust those. Those angles on this one are 0 degrees, 7, 14, and 21 degrees on the front and the back. When we do the Frontier it's a little bit different and I'll comment on that. This is one of two areas we're going to do today. This, this project here is going to be a butterfly garden that we're going to build. It's 70 feet long and 30 feet wide. So keep that in mind as we go through this demonstration. Obviously, we're going to take out the Land Pride first. I've got the disc set in the X configuration. And uh, away we go. I don't have very much level land. I'm jealous of you fellas that have nice acreage that's level and easy to till. Uh, mine typically, uh, it rises and slopes and... Uh, this is probably one of the nicer areas I have. Again, like I said, this is uh, 70 feet by 30 feet. I had one viewer suggest go faster, but my runs are only 70 feet here, so I can't get too much speed up. This is timber soil, so it's plowing up pretty nice, isn't it? A few rocks in here, you'll hear those hitting the, uh, the discs. Just want to remind you that uh, the weight per disc that's being delivered there is 35 pounds per disc. A previous video, uh, video 111, goes into a lot of detail and specs with this. But I'll just remind you, this uh, DH-10 is advertised as an economy disc harrow designed for tractors between 20 and, 20 and 40 horsepower. And it's for the Category 1 three-point hitch mounting on tractors. Brochures uh, goes on to say uh, this is this DH10 series is great for homeowner landscaping, small nurseries, hobby farm, wild game food plots, and medium duty residential use. You know it's what is that? An honest 
and you can see right there, here's one. You know, three or four, more, a few more passes might be nice, but what do you want? Is that all you want? Mm -hmm. Well, I wanted to check with my wife, and she said, yeah, that's all she wanted was the soil broken up, and she's going to do, uh, she can get her plants started in that, kind of wiped out any weeds that maybe got started on that. So I think that part's good. Now we're going to come back here in a little bit and do the frontier right side by side so you have a comparison. But let's go to the next spot. Now this area is about 50 feet by 30, downhill, of course, and this is going to be a food plot that we're going to plant some uh, oats in, or rye, uh, for the deer. The rye I spoke about is not rye grass, but it's an annual cereal type. And it grows 18 to 24 inches, grows rapidly uh, in the spring and early summer, develops an extensive root system that's good for the soil structure. You're going to hear a lot more rock and gravel in this area. I used to have some pet storage, or a, a shelter, pet shelter areas in here. So there was some concrete in here and some gravel, and uh, we used this to keep some pets, uh, goats. And uh, so this is going to be a little uh, poorer soil. And I started pulling downhill to see, uh, I just thought that was the logical way to go, but we're going to reverse directions here with the tractor and also uh, disc uphill. I want to see how that works. I think uh, the disc uh, plow here is fairly level. Looks like it's riding across the ground uh, level, doesn't it? I'm reading from the brochure right now. It says the truest way to level your disc from the front to the rear is observed behind the center of the disc harrow. In most soil conditions, a slight ridge in the center is actually a level operation. More air pockets will form where soil is thrown against each other, causing a small ridge to form that will disappear after a soaking rain. That's kind of interesting. I purchased a uh, power top link uh, recently, and I'm real excited to get that out, and uh, it'll eliminate me getting on off the tractor and making those fine adjustments. So. Uh, there'll be a video coming out real soon on that, and I'd like to thank Ty out in California for working with me on that and helping me uh, make the decision for the right, right power top link. All right, I'm going to change the direction now and pull uphill. I just want to see what the tractor will do, how it will handle and pull, and everything uh, so far I'm real happy with. And I'm going over the area that I uh, originally disc going downhill also. I left this in here to show you what the soil looks like before I started disking it. It's not compacted. But it's well settled and, uh, well, there, there's a picture of it and the way it looks before I started. So I'm real happy with the results I'm seeing here. Look at the size of some of these rocks. Holy cow. I was expecting some uh, baseball size ones, but some are pretty large. You can see a couple there in front of you. So I've got a lot of uh, rocks to pick up. What I'm trying to do here now is just pull, uh, pull the soil back. I wanted to show you what the uh, what the width was on the disc blades. If I was planting a yard, I would have went uh, uh, the other direction, as I'm indicating there. But uh, for a uh, rye uh, cereal grass in here, I think this is going to work uh, very well. So that's the difference they have on something that's not as wide as your tractor tires. You just get this overlap. But big deal, it's not a big deal to me. But that's gonna be the difference between this uh, four foot and this wider one from Frontier. If you ask me, so this is gonna be just fine. Well, let's go get the uh, Frontier, see what the difference is. Did I tell you the iMatch system was a birthday present? Just making sure. <laughs> 
Let's stop the video here about now. Look at how much wider that is than the tire tracks on the 2038. All right, lock the top bars down and we're ready to go. Like I said earlier, I'm really going to enjoy the hydraulic top link. It's going to eliminate all this uh, manual adjusting. That's going to be fun to use. I'm going to leave a lot of this video in that others uh, that I really considered taking out, but I want to show you the difference between the Land Pride and the Frontier. Now, granted, this was sitting in the dealer's lot for a while and kind of rusted up and needs a little lube, but that uh, bar there in the middle, I'm not a real big fan of that. The Land Pride design seems to be a little bit better. They're a little more user-friendly. Here's a snapshot of what it looked like before. It's a little bit more simple design, I believe, and we'll get back to that in a little bit. But I'm going to leave this in here and, and show you A little frustrating, so I'm going to leave it in and show it to you. What I'm looking at here is how do I get in behind the tractor and in front of that to, to make that adjustment? Now, if you guys, some of you have owned this and you probably have this figured out already, please comment and tell others uh, how to do it. But let's watch as I try to figure it out. I imagine with two people it would be a little easier, but I didn't want to take my wife off the camera. And uh, I wanted to show this as a single user, how, uh, how this adjusts. While you watch me wrestle around here and try to figure out how to get this all adjusted, I'd like to take a minute and thank all my new subscribers. Thanks so much for subscribing. I really appreciate it. And when you give me a thumbs up, it helps YouTube recognize maybe this video could be shared a little more. And I sure appreciate that. It makes my videos popular and encourages me to uh, keep making more. So thanks a lot, everybody. I really appreciate it. All right, let's get back to this, uh, this process here. And you're not going to want to miss here the next minute. Uh, well, I don't want to spoil it. Just stand by here for just a minute. All right, that's enough of this. Let's move on. I finally got it adjusted in there. Drop the uh, disc and I'm ready to go. And, and you're just going to love this. Well, watch. Off it comes. <laughs> I thought the iMatch system wouldn't need any adjustment with that disc plow being the Frontier. Well, I always keep a couple of those Category 1 to 2 bushings. Uh, adapters so I put that on and put a pin through it to temporarily hold it because I don't know which one I'm going to buy yet and uh, now we seem to have everything operating <laughs> correctly and going the right direction so let's get doing some disking here like I pointed out before I really like the width of the frontier to the back tires very nice and remember the uh, the angles of the disc, the front can be adjusted to 2, 6, 12, and 18 degrees. And unlike the uh, Land Pride, the rear can then be set to 10, 14, 18, and 23 degrees. Looking at websites and brochures, it looks like the working weight on this is 445 pounds and the Land Pride unit is only about 25 pounds lighter. I was surprised by that and if I'm wrong on that, please make a comment below and we'll get that corrected. I had a viewer once ask if I could add weight to that and I don't see anything in the brochures that would prohibit that. Obviously, they have uh, warnings like don't disc while backing up. Uh, they did point out that to get a nice finish, you make the front aggressive and then straighten out the rear. But I like the, the X, I call it the X uh, pattern uh, because I want a nice aggressive dig here with those notched blades. And this is turning out real nice, isn't it? 
I am going over, I'm intentionally going over the area that I uh, dissed up with the land pride. Now let's go over to the uh, food plot area and start working over there. And we're going to do this both directions, downhill and uphill. I'd like to take a moment and encourage you to uh, comment down below. I always uh, enjoy hearing from everybody and uh, tell me where you're listening from. I've got uh, regular viewers from California, Arizona, Quebec, Canada, and all over the world. It'd be nice to uh, know where my videos are being watched at and just say hello. Sure appreciate it. And I'll promise uh, to answer every comment down below and get right back to you. I had a big rock here, right there. You'll see it here in a little bit. Boy, that surprised me. So far, it's gonna be a tough decision on which one to go with. I like the extra width of the Frontier. Not real crazy about the handle uh, on top and adjusting the angles, but with some lube and that, I think I can get that working a little better. I really don't have any criticism of either one. I like the forefoot for the convenience of getting in tighter places, but I like the extra width behind the tires, as you can clearly see there, for eliminating tire tracks. And uh, if you've got 20 passes to do, I mean, it might cut a few passes off, right, having that wider uh, disc arrow. I think it'll probably bo uh, boil down the price like so many things do. But well, we just have a few more passes here, and then we're going to seed this, and then we're going to see what the uh, results are several months later. I honestly didn't see this rock right there. That's a, that's a piece of concrete, I think, or a piece of limestone. So notice how this steel comes into this with a bolt. And this one here. Notice how it moves. Where this one is one piece. These move. I can't move it now because it's on the ground. But there's less there's less movement in this design than that design. This design These a lot to be desired. Now, how fairness, I lubed it up. But you see, it's still. See, this binds up here. See, I don't like that. I don't know why they did that. What am I missing here? Is it because it's wider and the leverage on that center sliding joint is binding a little bit? If you have some ideas, I'd sure appreciate you posting them so uh, we can all learn. This just shouldn't be that hard, should it? Okay. All right, so I've got the grass seed set now, and I like the pattern, uh, the way it's laid down. I think that looks pretty good. And I want to try something different this time. I'm going to use the box blade. One, because I just purchased it and I want to play with it a little bit. And I'm going to tip it backwards and I'm just going to ever so lightly just grade the ground with it to set the seed into the soil. And uh, in the past I've used the pulverizer and run the spike roller over it. And sometimes the scarifiers would kind of rake the ground and the grass would come in in, in rows. So I'm going to try something different here and see if I can get a more consistent, even carpet of, uh, of grass and growth. Now this is a little too aggressive, so I'm getting a feel here on how to adjust that. And again, boy, that hydraulic top link, I can't wait to get that in action here and actually use it. That's going to be a lot of fun and a lot of convenience.
Well, I'm starting to get the feel of it here a little bit. And I like the way it's not leaving any uh, tire imprints. That was another reason of using the wide box blade to see how that would go. A couple more passes and I'm going to make a decision. Well, that turned out pretty good, but I just want to take it to a little bit higher level. Let's go get the 758, hook up the lawn roller to it, and roll it now. Then I'll really have that seed uh, set, won't I? So I'm going to take a few passes here, and I'm going to put this in high speed because I appreciate your patience and the respect of your time. I want to start wrapping this video up and show you the results. I chose not to put a mowing deck on my 1025 when I purchased that and instead I bought the 758. Never regretted that, it's worked very well for me. That 758 is a little billy goat. It goes everywhere with that four wheel drive. Boy, that's a nice tractor. If you're out looking for a tractor, take that for a test drive. It will not disappoint. Well, let's go ahead and jump ahead a couple of months and take a look how all, everything's coming in. Look at how lush everything is. We had a nice spring, adequate rain. And it couldn't be happier. Everything's coming in very nice. I wonder if that even carpet look is from rolling it instead of uh, using the uh, pulverizer on it. I've got another yard project coming up real soon, and I'm going to do the same process, I think. But, boy, it came in very nice. Well, that's going to wrap this project up. I'm sure you're dying to know uh, which uh, harrow did I purchase. Well, if I had some drum roll, I'd insert it right here. I bought the Land Pride DH10. Give you three reasons. Price, the uh, convenient size of it, and did I say price? In fact, I saved enough by sticking with this one that I bought the King Cutter box blade you're going to see in the next video. Stay healthy, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great month. So long.